Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, we're on lesson three this week, um, and we're gonna. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to carry on with your biro stuff because um, I know some of you are still doing the pencil drawing. Uh, some of you have actually gone right through the whole process and added colour as well to your drawings of birds too, which is fantastic. So I'm going to just talk about that briefly um, and show you the one that I did last week just to remind you. Um, this week, though, as I mentioned in the email and on um, the website and on here, uh, we're going to be using uh, inks today. All right. So the inks are really nice because you can start off by diluting them down so you can do it very lightly uh, and you can kind of map out and work out where the details are going to be and gradually refine your drawing as you um, continue with it. Um, which is really nice so you can get lots of details the other thing you can do as well if you've got really fine detail that you want to put in you can revert back to the biro and I know uh, probably one or two of you would do that um, straight away anyway um, so we're going to have a look at that um, and the other thing I'm going to um, start on for next week is um, we're going to use a little bit of acrylic so we've gone from um, doing mark making uh, with pencils and then biro and today uh, a brush and ink and then uh, we're going to take those skills into um, doing uh, another bird so i am going to do with acrylic so i'm going to do um this i found a lovely picture of a parrot which i'll show you in a minute i'm going to do a parrot i haven't done a one of those um before so i don't think i have anyway so i'm going to do one of those today um today when i've done the um finished off the ink stuff all right so we'll go over to um the studio wall and i'll just remind us of some of the things we've been looking at here we are. So um, you remember me talking about Mark Powell and how you can draw over um, different sorts of um, materials. So I'll just get rid of that owl a second. I'll talk about him in a minute. So um, if you remember, Mark Powell draws over things like maps and he uses um, biro to create um, these really uh, detailed drawings. So this is what we were doing last week. Um, I have um, also, I, I have drawn over things like maps before, but for this uh, particular drawing that I did in my sketchbook before, uh, last week I painted it in watercolours. So um, this is something you can do if you want to extend the work you're doing, uh, find some found materials, as I mentioned last week, and draw over the top of those. And if you do look on the Facebook um, page, you'll see uh, a few different um, uh, people that have had a go at drawing in biro over some old envelopes and postcards so if you haven't tried that yet I do uh, really recommend that now this is the owl that I am using today because uh, I started this last lesson and you might remember seeing me do it it's also on the video but I, I really like the um, I'm quite fond of owls as you can probably tell by now um, I have um, I have started working on this owl and if you remember last week I diluted the Indian ink down um, so that it was really pale uh, and then started to put in some of the details and tones so almost like drawing in very lightly as if you were kind of drawing in lightly with a pencil if you like and working back over the top of it. Um, so we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, now, if you haven't got ink, and I, I think most of you have, but if you haven't got ink, you can use other things like watercolour or you could use watered down acrylic if you wanted to as well. Uh, uh, you may know that acrylics, when watered down, can be used a little bit like um, uh, acrylics can be used a little bit like watercolours as well. Um, and certainly um, watercolours obviously dilute and are nice and translucent as well. So there are alternatives um, to using Indian ink if you haven't got them. All right. OK, so we'll go over to our view of my lovely desk over here. So you remember me doing this um, and talking about how Biro Pen is it kind of goes Let's just turn that around. It goes waterproof. Um, so in other words, you can paint over the top of it 
with either you could use inks over the top of it and the ink won't run um, but then you end up you know being able to paint um, over the top of your drawing that you've done with all those fine mark making skills that we've been learning and the cross hatching and all this sort of thing uh, you can work over the top of them with the watercolors so if you've not had a go either at doing biro or um, adding the watercolors over your biro do have a go because it is quite satisfying once you start adding that color over the top it's very enjoyable all right so um that, well, uh, just to remind people that the, the background that I did um, over here with these blended colours, um, what I did first of all is I put the water down and then I started to apply the colour. I think you might remember me doing that last week. So I put some of this brown down, I added some greens and then maybe sometimes a little touch more water. But the water that you place down on the paper first and then the colour on top it will help the colour will kind of blend together on its own. Um, now this is just cartridge paper. If you use watercolour paper, that will work. Obviously, that will work um, really well. But you can just go on it with um, just a, a piece of cartridge paper. You can try that out with as well. So um, a really enjoyable um, technique for you to try there. Okay, that was the next bit of paper. This was. Um, the drawing that I did before uh, today I added a little bit of watercolor to show people um, that one but this drawing I did also this biro drawing I did also add some Indian ink to add Tony shadow to my um, biro drawing as well and you can see that it's, um, it's been quite effective one some of the features that I really like are bits like this just here where the ink kind of has a life of its own and, and bleeds off on the side because it's wet and stuff but you can see um, here where I've added tone over the top of the biro to get help give the sh uh, sense of shape which I mentioned also last week all right so here is my lovely owl um, and I'll just pop him I'll put him up on the screen for us if I could find him there he is so this owl has got loads of different uh, lovely uh, texture and things on it and lots of detail that um, is going to be a really good um, amount of fun to play with. So um, it's nice to have like a, a plate to um, work on here. Um, and I've got a little, uh, this is just a lid from a jar um, that I put a little bit of ink in. You don't need tons of ink. Um, and certainly if you poured it out onto a lid like that, it can be difficult to get it back in unless you're using something specific for that. Um, so just put a small amount of ink in here and it will go a long, long way um, to help you with your um, piece of work. All right. So um, the kind of brushes you might want to use for this are brushes which are round. So you've got a, some round brushes. Just focus those in a bit more it's a bit dark but there you go so you want nice round brushes like this with a nice point on um, and these are I've got natural um, uh, hair on there as well so um, they're quite soft and but they're also quite springy as well you'll see them popping back when I put my finger across them sometimes you can get um, brushes like this but they're quite cheap and when when they get wet and things like that they just they, they lose their shape but they don't spring back in into position so they're not as nice to use um, but these were these brushes weren't particularly expensive I bought them on Amazon as a set um, and they're, they're a lot of fun to use actually I bought those last year or the year before when we were doing watercolors okay so um so the way to do this really is to start off by adding some water onto the plate i've got some a little jar of water just over here and then take a small amount of ink and you'll see that it spreads out quite quickly on here and then have a scrap piece of paper or just if you if not too fast just try it out on the side just to check you've got a really pale tone on the side there so look I've got 
a really nice delicate tone on there and then you can start to add in some of the details that you're going to paint and the reason you're starting light is because it's easier of course if you start light and you make you don't get things completely accurate then um, you can work in darker uh, and a bit more fine more finely and more refined as you go but if you start really really dark then you're going to end up you're, you've committed yourself to that dark tone so you're kind of stuck with it um, so start really lightly and then it will be much much more controllable and you can take your time over it so if you look at my this is the owl that I started during the lesson last week or his face you, you might remember me doing this so I started very lightly just drawing in some of the details and then gradually I added uh, some ink which was less diluted this today when I was in class I started on the wing um, I didn't get very far because we've got quite a lot of people so I had to go around and talk to them but um, yeah so you can start quite lightly so I'll, I'll do a little bit of detail on here now um, you may be thinking oh do I need to draw out my owl first um, yes Yes, so start by drawing out some of the shapes, uh, the main shapes. You can see on this drawing, I haven't put in all the details, but I've just drawn, look, the outside of the wing. Now, you may feel more comfortable um, drawing in more of the details, but do it very lightly um, because, again, with any drawing or painting, you refine the details as you progress and as you learn more about the subject that you're looking at. So always start nice and gently to begin with and then you're not committing yourself too much but it means you can refine stuff. So really all I'm doing in here is just drawing in some of the details that I can see very kind of loosely and then as we go through process of drawing with this ink and brush I can add more of the details uh, much more finely and 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 use a darker tone to do that as well okay but um, you'll obviously you'll be able to watch me um, work on this during the lesson so if you're not quite sure about everything that I've said then either you can ask questions or you'll you'll see me uh, do it through the lesson today and um, if you start really lightly it's quite enjoyable because you know it gives you it kind of gives you a little bit of freedom as well to sort of just play around with the marks before you fully commit to putting in the darker um, areas or the more refined marks that you need to put in to show your owl so you can see I'm being quite loose about what I'm doing on here at the moment as well. All right. So um, this is what we'll try out today. So as I said, start off by drawing the main outlines of your um, bird that you've chosen. Um, you'll see um, that um, today, this morning, because I always do this, I think, oh, I'll just have a look, see if I can find some more images or whatever. And then I post some more. I print off. I printed off a load more pictures this morning for class. But um, I've also put them on the share drive with a button on the website so you can access different pictures if you fancy trying something uh, really new. I've tried to um, choose pictures that are a bit closer some a bit closer up and um, some with uh, more flying birds and things like that as well so you can choose something uh, from there all right so um, is everybody happy with uh, what uh, we're doing in today's lesson you can unmute <laughs> uh, Jamie can I yeah. just ask you if it's white yes on the end do you just leave the white the right paper? Okay, now that was the other thing that I forgot to mention this morning. Um, some uh, I did put on my list of things to bring in. Um, one of these, 
a candle um, yeah yes so if there's areas on the picture that you think uh oh that needs to stay as it is even you know because it's very easy to put some ink down and you didn't actually need to put the ink there so if you use some of this candle wax so on my bird here i have got and i'll do this now i've got some white areas now i don't really i haven't drawn out these details so this might be where you choose to draw in the details with a pencil um, i'm gonna just put them in okay so literally use the wax crayon or the candle you can use a wax crayon or a candle the candle will be translucent in other words you can see through to your drawing underneath and then when you apply your ink over the top it will resist particularly if you've got plenty of water so if i just do this look i'll zoom in so you can see it a bit better because it's a bit far away now there we go so so you can put down tone or even marks over a waxed area and it will keep it white for you so even if you put down your ink on top or your watercolor or whatever you choose you'll be doing a wax resist technique which will mean that that area will stay white and it'll be quite a lot more difficult to paint back over it so yes any areas that are white you could try the candle wax which is um what I meant to mention. Okay. okay, so for the rest of the lesson, I uh, continue to work on um, this owl. And you'll see me um, switching between using uh, tonal marks and um, mark making or so sorry tonal washes and mark making oh this was the parrot that i'm planning to do uh in the next lesson i'm going to use acrylics next time um now somebody asked me um can you apply watercolors back over the top of your picture and um over your inks and yes you can the water the um inks stay waterproof so you can actually um apply um, watercolor back over the top of um, an, um, an ink picture um, without losing the marks. Um, so during this lesson um, I continue really just to keep um, layering lots and lots of different marks over the top of each other uh, and then doing successive washes, um, tonal washes back over the owl and the mark making to build up um, all of this beautiful texture on the feathers. At one point as well I use a fan brush um, on the body of the owl uh, as well and, and that what that does is it gives you a fan brush if you use a limited amount of um, ink, uh, watered down ink on there you can create some lovely sort of wavy lines to get that sense of the, the soft feathers um, on the body there um, we'll see that in a few minutes I think so really um, at this point I'm a whole the whole way through the picture uh, what I didn't want to get is bogged down with um, all the intricate um, details of the bird especially at this stage or of the feathers so what I've done essentially here is I've kind of mapped out um, a pattern if you like of all of the the feathers um, as I see them uh, and then during the rest of the period what I do is I go back into those feathers and add darker tones on top of the light tones that you can see me putting in now so you can see it's quite evenly toned at the moment there are some um, darker bits on the bottom of the bird um, and one thing you'll find out when you're working with um, the inks uh, is that uh, it, the ink may look a bit darker 
than you think it does. Uh, and then as it dries out, it lightens up. So you end up going back over the surface. But what that does at the same time is you have multiple layers of mark making appearing in there, which uh, creates a much more richer um, effect on your overall ink picture. Um, so you can see me going back in again on top there, a bit darker, and I do that again and again uh, during this whole process. Um, just a few seconds ago, you saw me use it by going back to my pencil. Um, I felt that I, I needed on that on that wing on the uh, right hand side, I just needed a little bit more guidance just so that I could see where to put the marks or the darker tones of the feathers, the stripy bits on there. Um, so I, I sketched out um, quite loosely and quite quickly those um, feathers at the top too. Uh, the important thing I, I remember looking at here was the angle of these feathers as they came down. Um, not, I mean, I haven't gone for drawing every single feather exactly as I could see it or exactly as it, as it is in the photograph. But what I've done is I've tried to get the angles correct um, and the kind of curve of the feathers at the top as well. Um, and that way giving an impression, a painterly impression of um, this beautiful owl um, in flight. So um, I didn't notice I was a bit out of focus just there, but there you go, back into focus again. So here we go again. Now there you saw just a, a little bit of a wash back over that part of the um, the top of the wing there. That was a little bit dark actually, but it doesn't matter to me too much. What you can do if you can um, perhaps try bleach to take out some of the um, the dark tones if you want to, or you could use a white pencil or a white pen to bring back in some highlights. Um, I don't actually do that in this. I stick with the ink from the start to the finish um, to get the end result. So this um, this bit where we're putting in the details of the um, the feathers here. Um, one thing is quite nice if you put in lots of mark making like I'm doing here you, and then you know you can do a wash back over the top of it when once it's dry enough um, and you get again you get that layered effect that I was talking about so the tone and the shadow uh, mixed in together um, so you can do that either way oh here we go with the um, feathering brush there to put in some marks uh, to get that sense of the softness of the, the, the feathers down here. And then going in nice and heavily where I can see the tone. So at this stage, I'm not looking at the photo that I've got on my desk here. I'm looking at the screen, at what you can see here. Um, because uh, if you look at things from a distance sometimes, you can get an overall sort of sense of where the tone and shadow is and add that in. So this is uh, quite the labor intensive bit is putting all these marks in and getting yourself going. Um, and then once that is in, you can start adding the tone um, over the top as long as it's dry enough. Because don't forget if you, it's a bit like watercolor, if you work over a wet area uh, with fine lines, they'll just disappear or they'll go all blurry. So it's important to just give a few minutes at least for areas of your inked um, uh, your washes and so forth, the wet areas to, to dry out so you can get finer marks if you if you need them. Uh, one of the things that helps sort of make the wing stand out is that lovely um, highlight where the, the um, golden light catches the, the wing on the right hand side of the picture. So that line that goes uh, from around the neck area side so that that little line there's quite important really just to define those two wings from each other I left that in there and then uh, working back in the tone darkening areas down uh, and just on the there you go look darkening down that that, that brings that wing forward um, thing to always look for is the, 
is the strong contrasty area. So we've got that really light highlight that I was just mentioning against uh, a really nice deep shadow. Helps that uh, wing to come forward a little bit more. There are areas of this picture where I needed more highlights. I didn't quite get to that stage during uh, this evening's um, lesson. But I certainly had a lot of fun playing around with the mark making. Um, I would add highlights just above the head where the body goes up or the neck goes up into the two wings. Um, and perhaps use a, a white pencil crayon or something like that to add some more things in there. But um, overall, you know, it's, it's worked out really well. I'm quite pleased with the results of this drawing. Um, and I call it a drawing. It's brush and ink, um, a brush and ink drawing, really. But a really nice way to um, get stuck in with the mark making and, and combine that with tone and washes of ink. So um, quite a lot of fun there. I think one of the things I might have done as well is work into the background um, a little bit um, because some of the feathers are a bit lighter than background. You can lift those out a bit further as well. But a lot of fun. Um, I hope you enjoy playing around with the inks um, as well. Um, so next week we'll be playing around with some acrylics um, using a limited colour palette uh, so that we can get the hang of using those. But um, yeah, thanks very much for coming along and um, watching the lesson again. And I'll see you next time. Bye.